McDonald's recently posted their earnings results for the second quarter of 2023. We can see the stock is up 12% over the last year while the rest of the market is up 8%. So they're outperforming the market over the one year chart. And so in this video, I'm going to look at some of the recent news that came out surrounding McDonald's. I'm going to look at their financial statements. And then lastly, I'm going to use a discounted cash flow model as well as figure out the weighted average cost of McDonald's capital to figure out the intrinsic value per share for McDonald's. And so we can see in this article, it's titled McDonald's revenue growth to moderate as a menu prices ease. We can see that in the first paragraph, they point out that revenue growth was expected or is expected to moderate in the second half of the year as signs of easing inflation prompt the burger giant to temper menu prices, which have recently contributed to the increase in revenue and earnings. Right here in the second paragraph, they point out that McDonald's posted better than expected quarterly profit and sales as it continued to attract consumers to its outlets. Major U.S. restaurants have had to raise their prices in order to offset the hit to their profit margins from higher costs tied to labor as well as commodities like beef and dairy, which have helped to propel their revenue over the last several months, as I just said. And then also we can see right here that McDonald's isn't the only one being affected by these changes. Also, Chipotle Mexican Grill has been affected by the cost of ingredients like chicken, cheese, pork. And now that those prices are increasing and restaurants have not had to spend as much on their cost of goods, they're starting to pause on further price hikes, which means that a lot of the improvements in revenue and earnings that have come from the increase in prices are beginning to fade away. It's a very short article, so to end off, we can see right here that point out that McDonald's had an 11.7% increase in their global comparable sales in the second quarter, beating out estimates of an 8.8% increase. Their quarterly U.S. comparable sales climbed 10.3%, and their international sales in China and Brazil posted better than expected results of a 14% increase. So all in all, pretty good news for McDonald's for the second quarter of 2023. Right here, we can see in their financial statement, this is their balance sheet comparing December 31st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. During that period, total assets basically stayed the same from 50.43 billion to 50.44 billion. And then we can see that they have a negative shareholders equity position. They have shareholders deficit of $4.9 billion, which means that they have more liabilities on their balance sheet than assets, which is manageable if you know that in the future you are going to be producing more profits to eventually be able to pay off your liabilities. Right here we can see that in page four, they are comparing their second quarter results for 2022 and 2023. Total revenue is up 14% year over year from 5.7 billion to 6.4 billion. And their net income increased 94% from 1.18 billion to 2.3 billion. And the main reason for that increase came at came from a massive in, or decrease in their operating costs and expenses, as we can see right here. Operating costs declined from $4 billion to $3.3 billion, while total revenues increased from $5.7 billion to $6.4 billion. And as a result, their net income ended up increasing by 94%. So that's definitely very good news for McDonald's. Then lastly, right here, this is their cash flow statement. We can see that operating cash flow increased from $618 million to $1.6 billion. And then for their financing activities, they've paid out dividends of $1.1 billion up from $1 billion in the second quarter of 2022. So that's a lot of value returned to shareholders. That's almost all of their operating cash flow that's gone straight into dividend payouts. And then we can see they also re or purchased treasury stock of $560 million. So they basically spent all of their operating cash flow returning value back to shareholders which is a good sign for shareholders of McDonald's. Right here, we can see this is a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for McDonald's. The growth rate I'm using is 5%. I got that using this historic growth rate calculation method right here. Their free cash flow in 2018 was 4 billion. Free cash flow in 2022, I forgot to update this before the video started, but yeah, it's free cash flow for 2022, which is 5.49 billion. So that's increase over five years compounded annual growth rate of 5.4%. That's what I'm using for the growth rate for this model. Weighted average cost of capital of 1.42%. I'm using that to calculate the discount rate to discount the current cash flows 
or discount the future cash flows to their current present value. And I got that using this weighted average cost of capital calculation. Total equity, as we saw, was negative, about six billion. Total liabilities, 56 billion. Interest rate on their debt, 2.67%. Tax rate in 2022 was 21%, their effective tax rate. 10 year treasury yield right now is 4.10%. McDonald's beta value is 0.64%, which means that they are a little bit less volatile than the rest of the stock market. Average stock market return is 10%. And so using these metrics, I calculated McDonald's cost of equity, which is essentially just their risk-free return, or not their risk-free return, but the risk-free return of the overall market right now, plus McDonald's beta, multiplied by the average stock market return minus the risk-free return. That gives us the cost of McDonald's equity coming out to 7.8%. We can see that for their equity proportion, 111% of their balance sheet is made up of liabilities. They have more liabilities than they do have assets, and they have a, ne a negative equity proportion. So I calculated their weighted average cost of capital by multiplying the equity proportion by the cost of equity, adding that to the debt proportion multiplied by the cost of debt, and then multiplying the debt proportion by the tax yield, and that gave me the weighted average cost of capital of 1.42%. And so we can see I'm using that in the model right here. For free cash flow, we can see that for the most recent full year was $5 billion. They currently have a net debt position of about $46 billion, and they have 730 million shares outstanding. That puts their intrinsic value per share at $112 per share, which means that at the current share price, they are not trading below intrinsic value per share. You'd probably want to buy them at a bit of a cheaper price if you want to buy them closer to intrinsic value based on these estimated growth rates, which is basically their historical growth rates, sorry. So right here we can see competitor and industry analysis comparing McDonald's to Chipotle and Yum Brands. Yum Brands owns different brands like KFC and Taco Bell. And so we can see across the board, McDonald's is pretty much dominating. They have the highest profit margins, the lowest P ratio, and the highest dividend yield at 2.15%. So definitely if you wanted to give it to a company in this competitor analysis, you would definitely give it to McDonald's. They seem like the winner here, the best investment out of these three companies based on these profit margins, P ratio, and dividend payout. Lastly, to end off the video, I wanted to compare McDonald's to some of the other companies we've looked at in past videos. We saw that at the moment, McDonald's is currently not trading below intrinsic value per share. They're not trading at a good enough share price relative to their intrinsic value to make it onto the table. Right now, Google, Ali, Alibaba, Albertsons, and Etsy are the only companies we've looked at that are trading below intrinsic value per share. We can see that for their growth rate, McDonald's had an estimated growth rate of only like 5%, not good enough to get them onto the growth rate table. Gross profitability, however, they are able to come in 10% with their 56.43% gross profit margin. Adobe comes in first place with an 86% gross profit margin. For net profitability, McDonald's comes in fourth place with a 26.65% net profit margin. So it's definitely very competitive. OXY comes in first with a 36% net profit margin. For dividend yield, they pay out a dividend yield of 2.15%, so $2.15 per year for every $100 you invest into McDonald's. Intel holds the number one spot with a 5.52% dividend yield. For year-over-year -year revenue and earnings growth, McDonald's came in fifth place for revenue growth with 14% year-over-year revenue growth for the second quarter. Tesla has the number one spot with 47%. And then for second quarter year-over-year -year earnings growth, McDonald's comes in fourth place with 94% increase. Intel is number one with 400% for the second quarter year-over-year -year income growth. So definitely very competitive for year-over-year -year revenue and earnings growth. And then lastly, for stock performance over the last five years, we can see that over the last five years, McDonald's is only up 86%. Keep in mind, this doesn't include the return if you include the dividend payout over the last five years as well, but I'm not gonna include that here. I'm just gonna include the increase in their share price, which is 86%. And so, that's not good enough to get them onto this table. Tesla has the number one spot at 1,144%. So based on this, compared to the other companies we've looked at, they're very competitive in terms of profitability, year over year revenue and earnings growth and dividend yield, but their stock performance is not as good as some other companies we've looked at. And their growth rate over the last five years, along with their estimated intrinsic value at the moment, is not as competitive as some of the other companies we've looked at. Lastly, for competitor industry analysis, they are pretty much winning across the board. 
They're beating out Chipotle and Yum Brands in profit margin PE ratio and dividend yield. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of McDonald's. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see everyone in the next one.